Hey everyone! In September, Alibaba released its newest and greatest image editing model, called QN ImageEdit 2509. The best part of this model is that it can take up to three images for creating new images, and also it natively supports control net signals. In this video, we are going to see where we can download the model, and also I have some great workflows for using this model. So, let's get started. First, let's see where we can download the full model and the FP8 model of QN ImageEdit 2509. The download links I am using here are in the description, so let's open this link in the browser. Here we go. In here, we can find the BF16 format and the FP8 format of QN ImageEdit 2509. Depending on your computer specs, download any of these. If you cannot run these, there are other quantized models you can try. Let's see about that. First, I want to show you the Nunchaku models. So, let's open this link in the browser. Here we can find a lot of Nunchaku models. Depending on your computer's NVIDIA GPU, download the correct Nunchaku model. If you are using newer Blackwell architecture GPUs, then download the FP4 models, for example, the 50 series. If your GPU is older, for example, the 40 series or 30 series, then download the INT4 models. Regarding the Lightning models, which are fast but will fail in some editing tasks, I don't recommend them. There are some reasons. Not just these, there are other quantized models in GGuf format. Let's see about that. Let's open this link in the browser. Here we go. Here, there are a lot of quantized models that you can download and try. Depending on your computer, download and try any of them. After downloading, let's see where we need to put the models in Comfy UI. Like in other videos, I am using the portable version of Comfy UI. Let's open the models folder of Comfy UI. In here, there is a folder called Diffusion Models. Let's open it. This is where we need to put the downloaded models of QN ImageEdit 2509. As you can see here, my FP8 model, GGuf model, and the Nunchaku model are placed here. Now we are ready. Let's switch to Comfy UI. Before you begin using my workflows, make sure you have these custom node packs installed in Comfy UI, which are Comfy UIKJ nodes, Comfy UI ControlNet Aux, LAN Paint, and RG3 Comfy. Once these custom node packs are installed, you are ready to start using my workflows. Let's take a look at them now. These workflows are available for free on my GitHub page. First, let's take a look at the inpainting workflow. In here, we have a group called Model Loaders, which is used for selecting and loading the models. The first one is the Load Diffusion Model node, in which you select the model you are going to use. I am currently using the FP8 model. If you are using the GGuf models, it's very easy to add the GGuf loader to this workflow. For example, you can use the GGuf loader from the GGuf custom node pack. Then, select the QN ImageEdit 2509 GGuf model and connect the model output of the GGuf loader to the model input of the LoRa loader model only node. It's simple as that. Similarly, if you are using the Nunchaku model, you can add the Nunchaku QN image dit loader. Select the Nunchaku model and connect the model output from the Nunchaku QN image dit loader to the model input of the LoRa loader model only node. It's so simple. Anyway, I'm going to use the FP8 model. Now, let's look at the LoRa loader model only node. In here, I am using the V2 version of the 8 steps QN image lightning LoRa. After a lot of editing experiments, I can say that none of these LoRas are perfect. There are some tasks where they fail. Therefore, if you are getting unwanted results, I suggest using the model without the LoRas and waiting until a new lightning LoRa arrives for the new QN ImageEdit model. Then, we have the load clip node for loading the text encoder. We are using the same text encoder that was used for the previous QN image editing model. You can also try using GGuf quantized models of the text encoder. Then, we have the load VAE node for loading the VAE, which is the same VAE used for the QN image models. Next, we have a node called Model Sampling Aura Flow, which has a shift value of 3. You can also try other shift values, for example, 2, 4, or 5, to see how they affect the generation. Then, we have a CFG norm node. Currently, the node is in bypass mode. Unbypass it if you are not using the lightning LoRa's. Then we have the prompts a positive prompt and a negative prompt. As you can see, this prompt is slightly different from the previous prompt used for the QN image edit model. This prompt takes up to three images for editing. So how do you write in this prompt? Just type about what you want to take from each image and how to mix the elements. For example, here I wrote, 
man from figure one wearing the suit from figure two. Figure one refers to the first image and figure two refers to the second image. If I want to take something from the third image, I will use figure three. You can also use image one for the first image, image two for the second image, and image three for the third image. You can also try using the word picture instead of image. Then the negative prompt, which is currently blank because we are using the lightning loras, and a CFG value of one. Typing anything in the negative prompt will not affect the image generation. Only type something in the negative prompt if you are not using the lightning loras and the CFG value is above one. Next, let's take a look at another node called Land Paint K Sampler. This node comes from the Land Paint Custom Node Pack. I tried using the native K Sampler for inpainting, but sometimes it fails. After some experiments, I think the Land Paint K Sampler works better. If you are not using the lightning loras, make sure you change the settings in the Land Paint K Sampler. Set the steps to 20 and the CFG value to 4.0 for a better result. Then let's move on to the next group, which has image loaders. Currently in this group, we have three image loaders. Use the first image loader for importing the main image. Then use the second image loader for importing images that have various objects in them. You can also use it for loading background images for background replacement. The third image loader is used for extracting a depth map and pose from any image. Next to that, we have the group called Composition Control. In this group, we can decide from which image we want to extract the depth map or pose. If the composition source switch is false, the depth map or pose will be extracted from the first image loader. If the switch is true, the depth map or pose will be extracted from the third image loader. There is also another switch for deciding if we want to use the depth map or the pose. If the switch is set to false, the depth map will be sent for image generation. If the switch is set to true, the pose image will be sent for image generation. The default options in this group will send the pose image of the first image loader, which ensures that the pose of a character will not change when we perform in painting. Then we have the other group called scale image and mask. This group makes sure the first image and the mask we create meet the right resolution before sending them to image generation. If you look carefully in some image scaling nodes, I am using the Lanxos method, which I think is better for scaling. There is also a grow mask with blur node for fine tuning the mask. Finally, let's move on to the other nodes. Here, we have the image comparison node for comparing the output image and the first image. Then, we have the save image node for saving the generated image. Now that we have a good understanding of the workflow, let's do an editing task. First, let's open this image again. Select the image, then click open. What I am going to do here is replace his suit with the suit from the second image. So, what we need to do is open the mask editor, then draw around the area where we want to put the suit. Then, save the mask. Go to the positive prompt. I am going to use this prompt. Man from figure one, wearing the suit from figure two. Now, let's run the workflow and see the result. The generation is finished. Let's take a look at it. As you can see, the result is really impressive. Now, if we compare it with the original image, you can see how nicely the inpainting process is done by the QN ImageEdit model. Now, let's do another editing task. Let's open another image. I'm going to choose an image of a table. Click open. Next, let's open the second image. I am going to select an image of shoes. So what we are going to do here is add the shoes from the second image to the table of the first image. So let's open the mask editor, then draw the mask around the area where we want to place the shoes, then save the mask. After that, go to the positive prompt. I'll type, shoes from figure two is placed on figure one. Now let's run the workflow and see the result. The generation is completed. Now let's take a look at it. Just like before, the result is pretty nice. If we compare the generated image with the original image, we can see that the model did a good job. But there's a slight zoom effect. That is because of our beloved group scale image and mask. To keep the proportion, the image gets cropped a little bit. Guys, don't worry, not every image will have this slight zoom effect. Now let's move on to another workflow I made, which is called composition control. This workflow has some similarities with the inpainting workflow. So, in this workflow, what I did is I removed the inpainting feature and also replaced the Land Paint K sampler with the native K sampler. So, let's do another image editing task. Let's open another image of a person. Let's select this guy. 
Then for the second image, let's open another image of a hat. Click Open. I will also be using the pose from the third image. For using the pose from the third image loader, make sure the switch is set to true in the composition source of the composition control group. And also, make sure the other switch for selecting between depth map and DW pose is also true. Now let's go to the positive prompt and type, man from figure one wearing the hat from figure two. Now let's run the workflow and see the result. Here we go, the generation is finished, let's take a look at it. And the result is not what I am expecting. Let's run the workflow again with another seed. Here we go, the generation is finished, and this looks better than the previous one. If we compare it with the original image, look how his pose has changed. Now let's move on to another workflow I call the normal workflow. The difference between this workflow and the previous workflow is that I removed the composition control feature. This workflow is somewhat similar to the native workflow provided by Comfy UI, and it can be easily modified for single image editing tasks. Just disable the second and third image loaders in the load images group. So let's do a single image editing task. I am going to restore an old photo, so I am going to choose this photo. Click open. So in the positive prompt, let's type, restore this image and colorize it. And also guys, this workflow is using 10 steps in the K sampler, just to see if that brings anything good to the image generation. Also, we can choose a custom resolution. Currently, I am using 1024 for the width and height. Now let's run the workflow and see the result. Okay, the generation is finished. Let's take a look at it. Just like before, I am saying yes, the result is nice, but I think it can be improved further by adding more colors into it. We can try modifying the prompt to see if it can improve the image. Okay, so guys, I think you should try more editing tasks with this model to see how it performs. As I said before, in various image editing tasks, the lightning LoRa's will not give you good results, so I suggest disabling the LoRa's. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Since the model released, it took me several days to develop proper workflows, and thanks to the creators of LandPaint for providing the custom node pack and the workflow that I took for building my workflows. So guys, see you soon with another video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel.